Macabre Mondays. It is the first one in October. So excited about this episode. Uh, also terrified. Mainly excited because it is the first time ever that I am going to be showing you guys something that I actually caught on tape. And I was unaware that I caught what I caught on tape. And when I watched it back and I saw it, um, it terrified me. The experience that I actually had terrified me and knowing that I was validated in those feelings even more terrifying, which makes it the perfect first episode of October. So, if you wouldn't mind uh, joining me on our trip down to San Diego, uh, founded by the Germans, if you didn't know, and we're going down there, and we're going to the Gaslamp Quarter, which is a beautiful area, historical, amazing, always loved it, lots of death. Uh, we're going to the William Heath Davis house, uh, the oldest house in the gas lamp corridor, um, and also the most haunted. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! Oh! Yeah! Huh. Huh, mini cat. So the William Heath Davis house has a really interesting history. It was moved three different times. It was at one point a military barrack. It was a hospital for almost 10 years. And the funny thing is, William Heath Davis <laughs> never even lived in the house in the 18, late 1840s. Uh, he was a Hawaiian guy. He came over and he saw San Diego and he saw, okay, well, Old Town, yeah, great and all, but it's so far from the water. Why don't we build a settlement closer to the water? So he did had the idea to start Newtown. Uh, kind of hard to do when lumber's hard to come by. So... He commissioned eight salt box style homes that he actually bought from the East Coast. They build them there, disassemble them, put them on a ship, bring it to San Diego and reassemble it. So the first location where it was, was on State and Market Street. And again, he didn't live there, uh, but originally it was the military barrack. So that's pretty cool. Um, I feel like whenever you have military anything, there's probably some strange hauntings. I'm assuming it's from being ordered around all the time. You're gonna get pretty stressed out. And what if you die? Then you're just stuck in that stressed out state. That's just my opinion. Um, but he sold it in 1867 uh, after he was penniless. Almost all the homes were gone or moved to Old Town because of the economic crash or chopped down and sold for lumber. So the reason why this house is such a big deal is it's the only one left standing. Uh, so he sells the house in 1867 to Alonzo Horton and his wife. And uh, Horton sounds like a dick. Not gonna lie, he's accredited for being like the founder of San Diego, the grandfather, whatever. Who cares? I don't care because actually it was Davis's idea. I don't care if Horton had five different wives and was an ice trader and a gold miner and then struck it rich in real estate and just lived there from 67 to 69 while his mansion was being built. Okay, they call it Horton's edition now. He might have done good, but Davis was the first guy to give it a shot. So give him credit where credit's due. He was there, you know, until his mansion was built. Then he peaced out. And then in 1872, uh, the house was sold again. There was a lot of land owned by Margaret and John Mountain. And uh, they decided to put the house there. And then it was sold to Mrs. Anna Shepherd. So the second location is 227 11th Street. House is planted. Anna Shepper. Oh, Anna, I believe she might have been a doctor or something because she, when the house was put on this lot, was directed by the board. The board meaning, I guess, um, like doctors, I'm assuming, because they're like, uh, charge a dollar a day to house the sick and ill. So she did. Uh, the sick and dying from 73 to 81 were in the house. Um, do I really, eat? it's like saying, oh, this is an abandoned place that was an insane asylum. Um, you know, that's going to bring its own horrors. But in 81, I think she just, she had enough of it. And, uh, they sold it to Mary and James Jones in 81 on February 1st. And, uh, James sounds like a pretty cool cat. He was a judge. 
uh, if you're into that sort of thing. And he was also apparently the first superintendent of the county hospital. It sounds like a coincidence. It sounds like it makes sense that that was the county hospital and then the guy who's the superintendent owns it. Not really sure where their story goes. Apparently, maybe they just died. But what I do know, 1970s, the city of San Diego bought the house and moved it to its final location, which is now Island and 4th Avenue. And that is where I had my experience and things get creepy. Woo, let's go. Okay, uh, so I was in San Diego filming locations, happened upon this place. I didn't know about it. I'd been to the Whaley House in Old Town. Everybody knows the Whaley House. But I saw a sign that said, William Heath Davis House, most haunted house in San Diego. And I'm like, whoa. So I start filming it. Didn't realize it was a museum that I could go inside of. Uh, so I went inside of it. Uh, had the place to ourselves. And <laughs> I, instantly, I'm not even kidding. I, you go, cause you're in the basement and you go up to the first landing of the house. I was overcome with this feeling of, I don't want to be here. And I have always considered myself very sensitive to energies, but I was like, you know what? I need to get this. I need to film this place. This has got a story. I got to do this. <laughs> I did it for you guys. So I, I pushed myself in and I first go into the kitchen and it's cute. I love, I love Victorian homes. I love going and exploring Victorian homes. So I'm, I'm usually be really, really excited about this, but I just felt like I kept doing this. Like I kept like thinking I needed to shake something off. I'm standing in the kitchen and I jump. I don't know why I jumped. There was nothing that moved, but I just, I, I there was this feeling that something, I don't know. It was weird. It freaked me out and I was sweating profusely and the place was air conditioned. So explain that one. Um, I was, I was also really, really dizzy. But I kept pushing through, uh, looked in the dining room, not, not as creepy as the other area. So that was good. Uh, but then, and these are narrow. I mean, this is a Victorian, so it's narrow. Everything's narrow. The hallway's narrow. It's wallpapered. It's dark. You, I felt like the walls were literally closing in on me. But then I saw um, the parlor. Saw that they had some Victorian clothes in there from like a peek in, but I did not want to go in this room like literally my boyfriend was like do you want to go in like are we going in here because I was just panicky like even now thinking about it I'm getting just like this weird like I don't uh anyways okay so I, I start going in the room and I just I'm just filming I'm just I'm doing my pan of the room I'm not a cinematographer so I'm just doing my best I'm just trying to get a pan of the room and I just feel like I really just don't feel comfortable like that's the best way to put it is I didn't feel like I was wanted there, if that makes any sense. So I, I did my little bit in there, walked around, tried to take it in because it was beautiful, but I got out of there as fast as I could. But then I was faced with the staircase. Uh, long, narrow, tall Victorian staircase. Um, I love them usually, they're beautiful. I didn't want to go up there. I stood at the bottom of that staircase for probably five minutes just saying like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. My boyfriend's like, are we going, are we not going? Meanwhile, he's also feeling slightly off. Um, <laughs> so we go up the stairs and uh, I'm just filming it all. Kids bedroom up there, creepy. Uh, there's a hospital set up, uh, creepy, the bathroom, um, another bedroom, got home, watched back the footage to make sure everything was fine because I was shaking while I was filming it because I was pretty freaked out in the house. So I want to make sure that I at least got something. And then I watched the video of the parlor. And I instantly see uh, the bluish orb that appears out of nowhere. <laughs> right where I was feeling the most uncomfortable. And I literally have goosebumps right now thinking about it. And I'm always skeptical when I see orb things uh, because it can be light flares, anything. But this was a dark place, okay? And I went through all the footage that I had, all the pictures. Nothing like this has ever, ever appeared in anything that I've shot. And then I was a little like, well, it's kind of bluish. What does that mean? And the weird spastic pattern. And then when I, when I pan and then it peers again, then you see something else shoot on the other side. 
oh god, like I literally like it freaks me out thinking about it. And when I did my research, apparently there's different. If you believe this, which I do, um, there's different color orbs depending on the energy or the spirit. If you believe in that, uh, of what it is, and that particular color blue could either be a calming spirit or energy or a protective one. Uh, the protective one, that idea freaks me out more because I did feel very uncomfortable, almost unsafe in that space. So if that was a protective energy, it's why was there a need for protective energy? Um, and then I watched the footage of the staircase. <laughs> and uh, again, there's that little blue thing on the side over here. And then I pan up the staircase and you see a white orb at the top. Again, is it dust? Is it anything? Uh, that's what I was wondering and that's why I did research. And that's when I found out the most common sighting in the house is of a Victorian woman in a white dress uh, in the top of the stairs or a white orb um I, i'm literally physically like uncomfortable thinking about this this is like i literally like keep, keep getting like paranoid over here i do not invite experiences to happen to me personally um i feel very sensitive to spaces and i don't like to feel like i'm not in control of what i'm experiencing and i did not feel in control in this place there's in the medical room apparently there is medical equipment that will move or things will close and open and you know just like a lot of museums if you go in the house they have the little ropes from the rooms people will leave they'll come back and they'll be open when they left it closed, that kind of thing. It didn't even get electricity in the house until the 84. So prior to that, it was still running on gas. And apparently in 77, a San Diego newspaper did a report that people were complaining that they were seeing the lights literally extinguish and then relight. Explain that one. The show My Ghost Story even went to the house and I watched it because I was curious and what they experienced because it's one of the Dawson's. Her experience was not wanting to go into the parlor and physically feeling like somebody was holding her back. Can I say that I felt somebody holding me back? No. Can I say that I felt like I did not want to go into that room? Yes. So of all the locations I've been to in my life, and I've been to a lot of haunted locations, or supposedly haunted locations, I can honestly say this experience is the first time I ever really felt uncomfortable. Like I really was being watched that I wanted to get out of there. I was genuinely scared inside of this house. And the footage that I got is the first time I've ever, ever gotten anything in anything. And I've never expected to. So uh, believe it or not, I believe it. I experienced it. It scared the shit out of me. So my feelings in the William Heath Davis house uh, go. If you... Uh, our brave one and experience. I really do believe this place is haunted. I really do believe that I felt and experienced something. Um, I would like to go back. I would like to possibly do one of the ghost tours and maybe talk to more people about their experiences. But, you know, even if you don't believe in that, it's a beautiful Victorian home. It's a great representation of the time. It's a huge part of San Diego history. <sighs> but uh, just beware. Hmm that you might feel pretty uncomfortable. As always guys, thank you so much for watching the show. I hope you're excited about October and Halloween and I have some really amazing episodes headed your guys' way that I filmed out in San Diego. I'm pretty excited about it. Next week's all about the occult. So get excited about that one. Please don't forget to use hashtag McCall Mondays when talking about the show. Like us on Facebook and also if you've ever been to the William Heath Davis's house, please comment below and let me know if you've had any experiences of your own. And also let me know if y'all would be interested in purchasing hashtag macabre Monday stickers. Cause if people want them, I'll sell them. And you guys can take pictures with them and it'll be exciting. Besides that, happy macabre Mondays y'all. Bye-bye.